How's it going y'all? In this video let's learn about what middleware is and how it works in Golang. As a bonus stick around to the end and I'll show you a piece of middleware you're probably going to want to use no matter what kind of API server you're building. Alright so broadly middleware in Golang is like a wrapper in other languages but specifically for HTTP requests. They're generally used for adding things like authentication, logging, or request modification to your endpoints in a modular way. So let's take a look at how we can use middleware in our code. Here's my basic web API where there's just one welcome endpoint which just returns a welcome message. Now obviously I need to protect this endpoint with authentication. One way to do that is to use an authentication function which verifies a username and password passed in against our database. Now this can get kind of annoying because if I have other routes, maybe many many more routes which need authentication, I have to repeat these lines of code for each handler. If only there was a better way. Well, this is where middleware comes in. Now middleware, as we've said before, is like a function wrapper, i.e. it just takes one function and returns another. Except in the case of middleware, this is a particular type of function, which is the http.handlerfunc type. If we look up the definition of this type, it's just a function which satisfies this signature. It's any function which takes in a response writer as well as a pointer to the request and returns nothing. All right, so let's write out an empty auth middleware handler. You can see this function does nothing, but it's valid middleware because it takes in a handler func and returns a handler func. Here now we can write our authentication logic. Now an important thing here is to call the next middleware in line if authentication passes. In other words, continue the chain until we get to our final welcome handler which handles a request. If we don't pass the authentication, we break the chain with this return statement and never call the next function in line. Now we can also easily add other middleware, say for logging requests. So we've written our middleware functions, now we gotta wrap our handler with them. So first we'll create a list of all the middleware that we have. And in our main function, we got a dummy variable here, which just points to our welcome handler. This will iterate through our middleware and wrap the function continuously. Now we use the wrapped h variable as the handler for our endpoint. One thing to note is that these middleware functions are called in reverse order. So the logging middleware is called first, then the auth middleware. Let's try this out. If I try to hit the endpoint, we get an authentication error. But if we go to our terminal, we see that the request was logged out. Now if we enter our username and password, we got a very polite welcome message. Now that we got the concept of middleware down, pretty easy, right? Now let's take a look at a real piece of middleware. This is something you probably want to write no matter what kind of API server you're making. The middleware we're going to make is going to help us gracefully catch any unexpected errors or panics in our code. For example, here's a handler which tries to add one to a nil pointer. If we run this and query our endpoint, we get a non-response from the server because the Go routine handling this request has crashed. We didn't have a chance to send back a nice, more helpful response or log anything out or try to recover, etc. To do better, we're going to add some recovery middleware. Again, this takes a handler func and returns a handler func. For catching unexpected errors, let's meet the recover built-in function. This function serves a similar purpose to try and catch in other languages, in that it stops the error sequence before it terminates the program, but still returns the error information. Let's implement this middleware and then go through the code. So the recovery function must be called inside a deferred function. Remember, defer statement means that we're telling Go, no matter what happens, make sure to run this piece of code before exiting. This includes running the code even before terminating due to an error. So this function gets executed before we crash. The recover function internally will restore the normal execution of the program, short-circuiting the program termination step. Now within our if statement, we can handle this error. For example, log out the error message or do whatever we need to for our particular program. More importantly, we can return a proper response to the user. Now one last thing to make this middleware awesome and something you want to use is we're going to import the native runtime slash debug package. Let's update our log statement now with this. This will now log out the stack trace to see exactly what happened. So we still get the benefit of seeing exactly where the error happened, but we can also handle any unexpected errors in a graceful way. 
All right, let's try this out. Now we got a reasonable error message back and checking back to our terminal, we still get a stack trace for debugging. And that's it. That's how middleware works. And that's how you write an awesome recovery middleware handler. Thanks for watching.